you have to describe its uh, body features scutigerella mm, yes. scutigerella belongs to the class uh, symphyla of subphylum myriapoda scutigerella is a, a small animal small animal it has a length of a maximum length of about 1 cm usually they they have uh, they, they have the size 5 to 8 mm they have a soft uh, and trans, tra translucent body they move very uh, rapidly in fissures and small cavities in the soil scutigerella possesses uh, a pair of long antennae as you can see all uh, that uh, antennae is, uh, is made up of several new, uh, segments and this animal has uh, 12 pairs of legs now you can count 12 pairs of legs and uh, 15 dorsal plates so these are the dorsal plates now you count the dorsal pla plates number of your uh, dorsal plates is usually uh, 15 these animals uh, feed on uh, algae fungi and mosses so they are vegetarians they are herbivores they are gonochoric their eggs are uh, spherical all are covered with the uh, plates uh, to form a hexagonal network okay in the case of juveniles uh, the first instar possesses six pairs of legs and in the case of adults there are 12 and uh, uh, after each molt one pair of leg is added and uh, at the last that means at the uh, seventh molt they they obtain 12 pairs then uh, their behavior they are sometimes harmful for uh, our crops they attack seeds and roots causing reduction in density slowing in growth and decreased yield for our uh, especially small uh, herbaceous plants or our uh, vegetables their damage is frequent in glass houses and cultivated fields they can be controlled by uh, using uh, centipedes. Okay. Uh, so that is the description about Scutigerella. Then coming to the next uh, class in the subphylum Myriapoda is class Diplopoda. This uh, class includes um, millipedes. Millipedes, the name millipede uh, derived from the number of legs that is uh, numerous legs each of their segment carries at least uh, two legs so uh, the silent features uh, I will explain the silent features millipedes are arthropods uh, that have two pairs of legs per segment except for the first segment behind the head you can uh, see this uh, another image of a, a millipede there are about uh, 13 species of uh, millipedes present in our uh, in our country and uh, uh, among which four are described from our own institution our um, arachnology department dr mm, who is, what is his name prasant prasant sangaran is uh, he described two species and if you uh, watch you can find the its anterior segment carries only uh, one pair and head segment does not contain any legs each segment that has two pairs of legs is a result of two single segments fused together as one most millipedes have very elongated cylindrical bodies although some are flattened dorsoventrally then they vary, their size vary from 2 mm to almost 30 cm in size. Some, uh, some species are inhabiting our forests have uh, 30 cm, at least that means uh, 1 feet in uh, length. Their body is long, cylindrical and divisible into head and trunk. Exoskeleton of most millipedes is heavily calcified. 
their body con consists of antennae, a pair of antennae you can see, and mandibles, and maxillae. Man mandibles are used for chewing their uh, food. Maxillae are fused to form nathocylarium that also help in uh, masticating the food. Each segment bears two pairs of appendages and uh, uh, their reproduction. Uh, reproductive openings are located at the anterior end of the trunk. Anterior end of the trunk. They are gonochoric, that means sexes are separate. Copulatory organs are called gonopods. Development is direct. That means there are no intermediate stages or larvae. Millipids are sluggish and detritivores. Detritivores means that they feed on all the uh, decaying organic matter. Plants or vegetable, vegetable matter. So that's all about uh, the millipedes that belongs to the class Diplopoda. Now another class of uh, another class of myriapod is that uh, the po uh, class Poropoda. This is also another small small animal, usually less than one centimeter. This is uh, more transparent than the uh, previous group. Uh, that means symphyla. These poropods are small, pale, centipede-like arthropods. Centipede-like. That means uh, they have uh, several legs. They form the order Poropodina, uh, belonging to the monotypic class Poropoda. There are about 500 species in four families, and they are distributed, uh, distributed worldwide. Such kind of distribution is known as cosmopolitan uh, distribution. They usually inhabit uh, soil with a uh, uh, lot of organic matter, especially leaf litter. They feed on leaf molds. They look rather like centipedes, but are probably the sister group to millipedes. That means millipedes are the, uh, the, 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 they belongs to diplopoda. So this animal, uh, its name is Poropus. Poropus. The, its body is divisible into two regions, the head and uh, trunk. Head bears a pair of antennae and uh, two pairs of mouth parts. Their mouth part is uh, known as diagnathic. That means they, they have separate, uh, two separate uh, jaw segments. That is why it is known as diagnathic. There, uh, the diagnostic mouth parts contains a pair of mandibles and a pair of maxillae. A pair of mandibles. You cannot see the uh, ma mandibles or maxillae. You can only see the antennae. Uh, in this case, uh, the, uh, all these uh, poropodans have, uh, they are blind. That means they don't have any eyes. Then mandibles are modified for piercing or grinding. First pair of maxillae is fused to form the lower lip uh, and regarding their intestine, uh, the, the digestive tract, forget is equipped with the pumping muscles. There is neither heart nor trachea in almost all species. Uh, the, a pair of malpigian tubules are present uh, as uh, they are used for excretion. The brain lies in the head and first trunk segment. Poropods are gonochoric. What is, uh, what is meant by gonochoric? Sexes are separate. That is, uh, in separate males and females can be seen. The third trunk segment, the genital segment bears gonopore and in males, the penis. Development is, uh, again, uh, indirect. That means, they, they carry larval stages. Then, Another class, very interesting class, and um, that class includes most diverse animals of the uh, phylum Arthropoda, the class Insecta. The class Insecta uh, contains all the flies, beetles, ants, uh, then, yes, uh, now this animal is Drosophila. Drosophila melanogaster, a model organism used for 
most of the biotechnology studies, genetic studies, etc. As you can see, their bo body is composed of a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. That is, body is divided, in, uh, dividable, uh, divided into three parts, head, thorax, and abdomen. Thorax contains appendages or uh, legs. Usually they are known as, uh, they, they belong to the, uh, they are classified into a special subphylum uh, known as hexapoda. In Malayalam, we, are, uh, we call them uh, shatpadangal, okay, hexapoda. So some example, this is a damsel fly. There are numerous species of uh, damsel fly, most of them are very uh, beautiful. They lay their eggs in uh, streams or uh, fr uh, freshwater habitats and their eggs hatch out and uh, the larva is aquatic and when they metamorphose, they, their adults will uh, fly. Then another uh, group, the ants. This is, the, uh, this is a cune ant of the Ecophila species. You may, uh, you may know the uh, the the uh, you what is its Malayalam name? Mir, Mir, or Puliurumbu, that red colored ants. Hmm? It is a cune or individual of that uh, Ecophila. So it is green in color, and all the other individuals are red in color. Then the mantis. Now this is included in a special family that is known as Mandoglossidae. These are uh, commonly these are uh, commonly named, uh, called praying mantis because they are um, they are four legs uh, or the kile legs are used uh, for uh, they usually position in this way. And another group is uh, beetles. You can see small beetles. The fruits are of Exora. Exora coccinea, chitti. It is the fruits of uh, Ixora and the beetles are feeding on that uh, small fruit. And the um, most beautiful animals, uh, the butterflies. Uh, this picture, I, was, uh, I, uh, I took this picture uh, from uh, Chimney Wildlife Sanctuary. Now this butterfly is uh, doing a particular act, it is known as mud puddling. Mud puddling, that means it if uh, it takes some mineral nutrients from the mud, which is, uh, which is uh, sometimes uh, that mud, which contains numerous um, minerals. Now you can see a small drop of fluid hanging from its abdomen. And uh, see, it's a uh, long mouth part. Using this mouth part, mouth part it uh, continuously sucking uh, fluid, fluid materials. And that fluid material is originated from, from the droppings and the urine of a, uh, of a uh, cow. And this, uh, this particular group is known as blue bottle. And there are numerous species. They are, all are colorful. They are commonly known as um, flying flowers. And this is another. This is a moth. What is the difference between a butterfly and moth? Color. Only color. Texture. Uh, when a moth rests on some uh, some uh, some uh, some object, it will spread its wings. Only moths will spread this, uh, sp spread their wings like this, and their antenna is like a, a long. Uh, it is it has some uh, feather-like appearance, whereas a butterfly has a coiled antenna. And uh, moths usually have feathery uh, appendages or uh, uh, sensory feather feathers. Most usually um, present during the. Daytime, uh, sorry, uh, during the uh, night time. Uh, the, so this uh, image shows the difference between moth and butterfly. This side shows moths, and that side shows butterfly. 
most uh, the antennas of um, most is uh, usually contains several feather like appendages and uh, the antenna of the butterfly has club shaped appendage and mostly butterflies are uh, more beautiful and the uh, special characteristic of moth is that they they carry certain um, eye spots on their wings eye spots that eye spots are meant for distracting their predators okay uh, this image i took uh, from my uh, back our home's backyard and this is known as uh, indian oak blue butterfly indian oak blue butterfly and now there's a video yes. it feeds on a particular plant namely euphorbia mili euphorbia and you can see its hind quarters its hind parts also has certain antenna like uh, projections it is for it is a, a camouflage it is for distracting its uh, uh, predators attack uh, attack hmm? its head region is the this side and uh, usually the predator attacks at the uh, hind region and if uh, the predator attacks at the hind region it will not miss its head okay so that it can this, the butterfly can save its head another group is a dragonfly something related with uh, the damselfly a dragonfly is so, uh, also its uh, larvae are uh, hatched in the uh, living in the uh, aquatic habitat they are also uh, very colorful they are highly predaceous that means uh, they they are um, they prey on uh, small insects while on flight and the idea of developing he uh, helicopters are known to be developed from the uh, particular habitat of uh, this animal dragonfly okay now we have to study uh, some examples uh, from the class insecta we have given the example dragonfly dragonfly and uh, dragonfly belongs to the order odonata odonata of the class insecta and when we study a dragonfly uh, as the characteristics of uh, the uh, salient features of the class insecta it has three body parts the head the thorax and the abdomen head bears a large uh, compound a pair of large compound eyes and also has a pair of antennae and mouth parts the thorax has three pairs of legs and a pair of sorry uh, and uh, two pairs of wings the wings are elaborate and hyaline hyaline means they are very delicate and they are uh, very uh, the 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 innervation is uh, innervation can be seen on that then a long abdomen can be seen their mouth parts are of biting type so that they the, they sometimes will bite uh, us if you uh, uh, try to handle these insects they will sometimes try to bite our soft body body parts their antennae are short and the mouth parts are of biting type then meso and metathorax are fused to form synthorax dragonflies are similar to damselflies but the adults can be differentiated by the fact that the wings of most dragonflies are held perpendicular to the body when at rest see its uh, wings are held perpendicular to the body as uh, there is a their other group the damsel flies spread out their uh, wings in a see in a compact position 
Dragon flies possess six legs used for resting. They are not capable of walking. But we use it to uh, catch them and uh, uh, punish them by, by uh, allowing them to take a stone. Dragonflies are valuable predators that eat mosquitoes. That is their ecological importance. And uh, uh, they feed other small insects like flies, bees, ants, and butterflies. They are usually found around lakes, ponds, streams, and wetlands because their larvae, uh, which are known as nymphs, are aquatic. All the dragonflies and uh, damselflies lay their eggs in the water body especially on the water surface. Okay. That is the first example, a dragonfly, then uh, the butterfly. Coming to butterfly, a butterfly is an insect of the order Lepidoptera. Butterflies are notable for their unusual life cycle with a larval caterpillar stage. Uh, I will show you a small video. Yes. Hi, my name is Ethan. This is my brother Justin. Today we're going to talk about how caterpillars turn to birdflies. Do you follow their language? Birdflies are larvae and watch them turn to birdflies. So it is the first stage. First thing so, that happens is that is the eggs of a butterfly. Egg. Usually found in clumps, attached on some uh, leaflets. The, these are the hatchlings, the first in stars. And these people uh, feed this butterfly with some um, some food materials like leaves. We can uh, cultivate, we can grow these caterpillars in our uh, in our classroom. Ten they are voracious feeders. They grow bigger and bigger and, and most of our uh, agricultural pests, pests are larvae of certain uh, certain butterflies or certain moths. We watched our caterpillars that they grow and each day they got bigger. So there will be at least uh, six larval instars. That means six molting stages. And after which that uh, that become a chrysalis. Now this video shows how uh, the caterpillar becomes a chrysalis. Now this uh, video is very long. This is a chrysalis stage. Caterpillars inside are ready to change to a butterfly in the cocoon. Now this is the uh, opening stage, or when the chrysalis is uh, metamorphosed into the adult fly. The butterfly has a long tongue called proboscis. And it drinks nectar from flowers. The butterfly hangs upside down and puts blood into its wings. When the butterfly's wings are dry, it can fly. In another week, the butterfly lays more eggs with 
Look there, Andina. And the, uh, all the butterflies has sucking type of uh, mouth parts. The mouth part contains a particular uh, organ, namely proboscis. That proboscis is used to uh, get nectar from flowers. These uh, butterflies are important for the pollination and um, dispersal of several plant species. Because of butterflies, most of the flowers have you know, beautiful coloration. Now we have the example of one particular genus of butterfly that is known as Papilio. There is a um, feature film in Malayalam that is Papilio Buddha. Papilio Buddha. Papilio Buddha is a uh, species of butterfly usually found in the um, side in the Western Ghats. So that's all about uh, butterflies. Now I will show you one uh, video in which a particular crustacean. In the last class, we uh, discussed about crustaceans. Uh, that crustacean is squilla. These are the compound eyes of the uh, marine crustacean, namely squilla. The mantis shrimp is a true heavy hitter. Take this one. She's about to devour this snail. But she's got to crack it open first, so she carefully positions it. Then, bam! She punches it with the speed of a 22 caliber bullet. It's the fastest attack in the animal kingdom. That's one kind of mantis shrimp, known as a smasher. Here's the other. This one's called a spearer. Buried up to his eyeballs, he punches and waits. Then, springs into action, impaling his prey on a serrated blade with blinding speed and dragging it beneath the sea. The gadgets uh, fishes of uh, more than their size. What makes these two so amazing isn't just their speed. It's their eyes. See those black spots? They're like our pupils, where the light enters the eye. We humans have one in each eye. Each sends an image to the brain, and voila, depth perception. The mantis shrimp has six of them. Six our pupils. Binocular. His vision, hexnocular. For when accuracy counts. As for color, we've got three receptors, red, green, blue. The shrimp has 12, another world record. But there's even more. We have only three color receptors. They have 12. So their uh, world is more colorful. And in addition to the, their color perception, they have uh, uh, the ability to perceive polarized light. And they use this uh, polarized uh, light to communicate between uh, different individuals. Polarized and where it isn't. Some mantis shrimp take this one step further and produce. And they have a particular organ uh, that helps to uh, polarize that, uh, lens, uh, that light. See, mantis shrimp are incredibly territorial. They will defend. This is, a com this is comparatively a new finding. Here's how it works. Remember when I said that polarized surfaces organize light into a plane? Well, these surfaces on the mantis shrimp make the beams of light circular, spinning through space like a helix. 
As far as we know, only other mantis shrimp can detect this with their eyes. You can see it here because we put a polarizer on the camera. So these shrimp have taught us a thing or two. By reverse engineering the mantis shrimp's eye into a camera, a group of scientists have begun to use polarized light to diagnose injuries and disease. This scanner measures polarization in red. See how this And this methodology is known as biomimetics. When we use uh, the studies or uh, ideas from biological world uh, to, uh, to make instruments, uh, we, use, we use the term biomimetics. Hi, it's Katie. I wish I could That's say that no snails were... Okay. Now our discussion about uh, the class insecta is over. Now we may go to the laboratory.